Hi, my name is Chris Hegarty. I work in the Java Platform Group at Oracle, and today I'm going to give an introduction to the Java 11 HTTP client. In this session, we're going to take a look at the main types of the API, what module and package they can be found in, how to perform some basic operations like sending a request, and how response body is modeled. Enhancements in the JDK are done through JDK enhancement proposals. JEP 321 standardizes the API that was incubating in previous JDK releases. The HTTP client is provided by the JavaNet HTTP module, and that module exports a single package of the same name. Unlike the previous incubating version, this module is now part of the Java SE platform and as such, it is resolved by default when compiling or running non-modular code. Modular code can, in its module info source file, either require the JavaNet HTTP module directly or require the Java SE aggregator module. The HTTP client class is a top-level type. An HTTP client can be used to send requests and retrieve their responses. A HTTP client is created through a builder. The builder can be used to configure per client state, like the preferred protocol version, either HTTP 1.1 or HTTP 2, whether to follow redirects, a proxy, a connect timeout, and much more. Once built, a HTTP client is immutable and can be used to send multiple requests. The HTTP client API follows the familiar builder pattern. There are factories for creating builders for the top level HTTP client and the HTTP request types. In this example, the HTTP client new builder static factory method returns a new builder of HTTP client. The preferred protocol version HTTP2 is set, which is the default. The normal redirect policy is set which means to follow redirects always, unless being redirected from the more secure HTTPS to the less secure HTTP. The proxy of the given address in port is set. A system-wide default authenticator is set in case the site requires authentication. A connect timeout for new connections is set to 20 seconds, and then the client is built. Multiple requests can be sent by a single client. An HTTP request instance is built through a HTTP request builder, where the request URI can be set, the request method, the headers, a body if any, and the request specific timeout. Once built, a HTTP request is immutable. Similar to HTTP client, HTTP request has a new builder factory method that creates a new HTTP request builder. That builder can be used to set the per request state. In this example, the request URI is set to openjdk.java.net, a request specific timeout of one minute is set, a header indicating the content type, since this will be a post request. The body publisher's of file factory method is used to return a request body publisher that publishes the content of the given file path, in this case in JSON. Requests are immutable and can be sent multiple times. An HTTP response is not created directly, but rather returned as a result of sending an HTTP request. An HTTP response is made available when the response status code and headers have been received, and typically after the response body has also been completely received. Whether or not the HTTP response is made available before the response body has been completely received depends on the body handler provided when sending the HTTP request. We'll take a look at the body handler more closely in a late, later in the presentation. HTTP response provides methods for accessing the response status code, the headers, the response body, and the HTTP request corresponding to this response. The HTTP client supports synchronous and asynchronous modes of operation. Requests sent with the synchronous send method block the current thread of execution until the response is available. Requests sent with the send async method 
return a completable feature of HTTP response. Completable feature added in Java 8 provides a number of methods for building chains of dependent actions that can be run either synchronously or asynchronously. In this example, the client's send method is given the request to be sent, along with a body handler that converts the response body bytes to a string. Then the response status code and body are printed. The send method blocks the calling thread until the response is available. This next example is the same code, only written using the asynchronous style. The send async method is given the request to be sent and also a body handler that converts the response body bytes to a string. The completable feature then apply method is being used to create a dependent action that prints the response code and returns the response. Another then apply method is used to create another dependent action that maps the HTTP response to its body type, which in this case is a string. The then accept method consumes that string and just prints it out. Java Util Concurrent Flow was added in Java 9 and it provides the Reactive Streams interfaces for the Java platform. The HTTP client models request body using a subtype of flow publisher, a request body publisher. The HTTP client subscribes to this publisher when sending a request that has some body. On the receiving side, when a response code and headers are received, the HTTP client calls the body handler. The body handler can then inspect the status code and headers, if it wishes, before creating a subscriber. This subscriber, returned by the body handler, will be used to receive and process the actual response body bytes. The HTTP body subscriber is a subtype of flow subscriber and the HTTP client acts as a publisher of response body bytes. Looking a little closer at the request body publisher, it is a flow publisher of byte buffers. The byte buffers contain the request body bytes. It also adds a single abstract method, content length. This method can optionally return the length of the request body if known. A request body publisher implementation is responsible for converting a high-level Java object, like a string, into a flow of byte buffers that can then be sent as the request body. The request body publishers class contains only static methods, and these methods are factories for creating body publishers that can be used for most common use cases. Here we can see some of the factories for creating, a body, for creating body publishers. From a byte array or an iterable of byte array, from a file path or a string, as well as from an input stream. Body handler is a functional interface that has a single method apply that takes a response info containing the status code and headers. The body handler is invoked when the res response status code and headers are available, but before the actual response body bytes have been received. The body handler can inspect the res response code and headers before returning the body subscriber that will then be used to receive the actual response body bytes. Body subscriber is a flow subscriber of an aggregate of byte buffers. The byte buffers contain the response body bytes. Body subscriber adds a single abstract method getBody that returns a completion stage that completes with the higher level type that the body subscriber implementation will convert the response body bytes into. In many cases, it is not necessary to deal with body subscribers directly, but rather body handler. The body handlers class contains only static methods, and these methods are factories for creating body handlers that can be used for both common use cases. Here we can see some of the factories for creating body handlers to convert the response body into a byte array or a string, to stream it to a file or an input stream, as well as replacing and discarding handlers when the actual response body is un in uninteresting. And there are more exotic handlers that act as combiners and adapters 
for, for buffering and interacting with regular Flow subscribers. Now let's take a look at some examples. This is an example of a synchronous GET. A new HTTP client is created over which the request will be sent. A request is built with the given URI. GET is the default method, so there's no need to explicitly set the method here. The client's send method is then called with the request. The body handler's of string factory method returns a body handler that converts the response body bytes into a string. The send method blocks until the response is completely received. It then returns an HTTP response of string. The response string is then printed. This next example is similar to the previous one, only the code uses the asynchronous style. The send async method is given a request to be sent and also a body handler that converts the response body bytes to a string. The send async method returns a completable feature of HTTP response. The completable feature then apply method is used to create a dependent action that maps the HTTP response to its body type, which in this case is a string. It is this dependent action that is then returned by the get method. There is no code here that blocks. Callers of the get method can either create additional dependent actions chained off the return completable feature, or call join to explicitly block until the response body string is available. Moving to the next example, again this get method is similar to that of the previous example, only this time it writes the response body to a file. The body handler's of file factory method creates a body handler that streams the response body to the given file path. Again, this method is asynchronous and none of the code here blocks. The returned completable feature completes with the file path when the response body has been completely received and written to the file. Next we have an example of a POST request. This time the HTTP request builder has an explicit setter method called that sets POST as the HTTP method. The actual POST method is given a body publisher so that it knows how to get the, re the request body. Here the body publisher's of string factory method is used to create a body publisher that publishes the given string. The request is sent synchronously and this time the discarding body handler discards the response body hence HTTP response of wildcard, which is an unknown type. This is a more advanced example and it demonstrates how to combine Java streams and completable future to send a number of requests and collect the responses. The get URIs method takes a list of URIs that will be retrieved. This list of URIs is then converted into a list of HTTP requests by stringing, streaming over the original list, mapping each entry to a request builder, and subsequently building the request and collecting to a new list. Next, each request is sent asynchronously and the completable features of HTTP response are collected into another list and that list is returned. Callers of the getURIs method can inspect elements of the returned list to either chain dependent actions or query for their completion. To summarize, the standard HTTP client added in Java 11 is a replacement for performing HTTP access through the URL connection API, which is now more than 20 years old. The HTTP client was incubated in previous releases and standardized in Java 11. Code using the incubating version of the API will need to be updated for Java 11. Minimally, the import statements will need to reflect the new package name, JavaNet HTTP. The HTTP client API uses more modern language features like generics and Lambda, as well as more modern platform APIs like Completable Future and Reactive Streams interfaces. The API is deliberately small and compact. You can download Java 11 now at this URL, 
please join us at OpenJDK or follow us on Twitter at OpenJDK or hashtag Java11. My own Twitter handle is at Chegger999. Oracle is the steward of Java, providing a large amount of development engineering funding for the Java SE platform and OpenJDK. Oracle provides a leading class premier support for a low cost that's easy to purchase with simple pricing tiers. Thank you for watching.